In the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verses 1 and 2, David wrote, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. David here talks about the blessed man, the happy man. And in order for a man to truly be happy in this life, he needs to have an understanding of what's to be done to receive that. And there are three different things that David said in this verse in regard to a person's sin. The blessed man is one, he says, whose sins are forgiven. The blessed man is one whose sins are covered. And the blessed man is the one to whom God does not impute his sin. Even though a man is guilty, though he's committed things that are wrong, and God does not impute or God does not attribute that sin to the person. The sins are not imputed to him. And that's a wonderful thing to think about. And that's one of the things that will bring happiness to a person. Paul talks about that in, in Romans chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, and emphasizes that the happy man is the one who knows the forgiveness of sins, who knows that God has removed those things from him. And if you look in the book of Acts chapter 8, the story there we're familiar with about the Ethiopian nobleman who'd been down to Jerusalem to worship, and now he's on his way back home. And as he's riding along, he's reading from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, what we would regard as chapter 53, when uh, Philip comes and joins him. And he asked the question, Do you understand what you're reading? He said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he invited Philip to come up into the chariot with him. And the Bible says, beginning at that verse, Philip preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on the way, he said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he made the good confession, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so, they commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And when they came up out of the water, the text says that, that the Spirit caught away Philip, that he saw him no more, but he, that is the, the eunuch, went on his way rejoicing. Here's a man who's come to really know and understand what true happiness is. He's able to rejoice because of the fact that his sins have been forgiven. But such, such submission to God and obedience to God's will in order we might be forgiven our sins and have that true happiness, has to be a submission to God that is willfully given by us. Later on in that same chapter of Psalms 32, back at verse 9, an interesting statement is made here by David when he writes and says, Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. What's he talking about in that verse? Here he's talking about the fact that an animal, such as the mule or the horse, if it's going to be obedient to you, has to be forced to do so. It has to have that bit put in its mouth and that bridle put over it so you can control that animal and make it do what you want to do. And so David here is telling the people, do not be like those animals. Do not be like those who have to be forced to obey God. You need to do what God wants you to do willingly because it's only when we're willingly obedient to God that we can receive this blessing, this happiness that comes from the forgiveness of our sins. Forced obedience is not going to bring such blessings as that. In Romans chapter 14, verse 11 and 12, as well as in Philippians 2, 10 and 11, the Apostle Paul made this clear when he let us know that someday every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And there's coming a time, the time of judgment, when we'll all have to stand before God and give an account to God for how we've lived. That on that occasion, every knee, everyone is going to have to bow, and everyone will make that good confession. But by then, it'll be too late. If one is not willing to give their obedience to God willingly, if they have to be forced to do it, they're acting like that mule or like that horse. And David, please don't be like that. We don't want to be individuals who will not obey God until that time of judgment when we're forced to obey. But if we will obey Him now, that's when we can have the blessing and forgiveness of sins that will bring to us true happiness in this life. He made the statement about those animals. He says, they have no understanding. But you and I do. God created us with the ability to reason, to understand, and to make proper decisions. And God's given us the information in His Word of what we need to do in order to please Him to be forgiven, and to have true happiness. That we would believe in Jesus as His Son to the extent that we'll repent of our sins, confess Him before men, 
and be buried with Him in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We can understand that, and we can render obedience to it and have our forgiveness granted to us and be able to have that true happiness that God gives. It means that the erring child of God understands through the study of God's Word that God requires of him to repent of those sins and pray to God for the forgiveness he needs. We're not like animals. We can understand. We can read words that God has given to us, and we can obey it and know that God will forgive, and we can go on our way rejoicing. Tonight, if you're subject to his invitation, if you understand that, that you need to make your life right with God, or maybe if you're just someone here, you, you don't really know for sure what you need to do and you would like to study more about it, then we'd, we'd be glad to sit down with you and talk with you and help you to see what God requires of all of us. If you're in here today as one that needs to respond in obedience to His will, whatever way it may be, we would encourage you to do that now while we stand and while we sing.